about inheriting the kingdom of God. And this is a series, a new series that we're beginning tonight. And the message tonight is entitled Preparing to Rule as Kings. Uh, you know, if somebody's going to inherit a kingdom, and, and we can think about it in the natural realm, if somebody's going to inherit a kingdom, they've got to be prepared to rule that kingdom. I, I think about Alexander the Great. Uh, you know, he went out uh, as a young teenage boy with his father and fought in the battles as they mm -hmm. uh, conquered some other uh, kingdoms around them. And then uh, he uh, became uh, the ruler when his dad was assassinated at an early age. But he was prepared for that. And, and he and his dad had even prepared to go into Persia. So it was very quickly that he went into Persia and and conquered that and became Alexander the Great. But to rule a kingdom, you have to be prepared to do that. Now we can think about some uh, rulers in the Bible. Uh, Moses was prepared uh, to deliver uh, God's people out of Egypt and to rule over them and to lead them uh, through the wilderness and prepare out of Egypt and through the wilderness. And he was prepared because God placed him in the house of Pharaoh. He was there for 40 years. And then in the wilderness for 40 years, he was prepared to be a ruler. Then let's look at Joseph. Joseph uh, was favored by his father and uh, his father probably had a place there for him of uh, favor, but he was placed by God in uh, Potiphar's house first and then into prison before he was elevated to rule over, Israel, over Egypt. You know, he said in Genesis 45 verse 8 to his brothers, he said, you didn't send me here, but God sent me here to be a father to Pharaoh, to head his household and to rule this nation of Egypt. And so there was positioning and preparation for these people to be rulers. Now, David is the next one I want to talk about. David was called and anointed of God to be king over Israel, but he had to spend years in the house of King Saul in order to be prepared to be king over Israel. So there's some preparation. And, and I, what I'm talking about tonight is something very dear to my heart. And the kingdom of God is a mystery. That's what um, Mark chapter mm -hmm. 4 verse 21 says. It's a mystery. Uh, and so we have, we have to seek out this mystery. And it has to be revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. It has to be revealed. That, and that's very important. We can't just go into it uh, like a, a carnal person <clears throat> and think that we understand the kingdom. And I want to give you an, a personal example. And for years and years, I heard many people teach about the kingdom of God. And they taught just basically the words in the Bible. But those words were given as parables, as dark sayings uh, and riddles and hard to be understood by the natural man. But one day, after years of many people teaching and talking about the kingdom of God, I heard an apostle teach about the kingdom of God. Now, when he did, there was an explosion in my life, and it, the kingdom was birthed within me. <laughs> See, it wasn't birthed by all of those other ministers who had taught basically the parables. It was just an intellectual approach to the kingdom of God. But when this apostle stood up and began to teach, when this explosion went up, because he was anointed uh, to teach on the kingdom of God, the kingdom had been revealed to him. Now, what I'd like to say is, well, I'm going to tell you what he told me, but let me tell you the real <laughs> the rest of the story because I didn't have a piece of paper uh, to make any <laughs> notes except of the program. And so the, it already had writing all over. It, and so it was just in the margins, I began to make some scribble, some notes. 
but, but I knew from immediately that this was a message of life and life to me. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so I made, I scribbled these notes and then afterwards I looked at them and they didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So what I'm teaching you tonight is not what I heard from that man, but I knew that the kingdom had been birthed in me that day. And over time, the Holy Spirit has revealed the mystery of the kingdom to me. And so I'm going to begin to reveal uh, to you and, and mm -hmm. to teach you some of the things that the Holy Spirit has been revealing uh, to Sherry and I over the years. And I believe that this will impact you like it impact me and, it, and that it will bring life to you about the kingdom and not just the dead letter, but by the spirit of God and by the anointing that you'll understand the kingdom and have a revelation uh, of the kingdom. See, the kingdom is an unseen thing, but the unseen is the reality. So we can look uh, with our natural eyes on the earth and see things around us. And those are the seen things, but the kingdom is the unseen because Jesus said the kingdom is uh, within you, the kingdom is around you, and it comes without observation because mm -hmm. it's unseen. But 2 Corinthians 4, I believe it's verses 17 and 18, says that the things we see are temporal, or that means temporary, but the things we don't see are un the unseen things. These are the eternal, eternal things. things. And that's what the kingdom is. It's e an eternal uh, thing and an er eternal uh, truth. And of course, we know that from uh, Romans uh, 14, 17, that uh, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it is the realm of the Holy Spirit, and it's the realm of the miraculous. And so we're going, there's many things that, that I want to talk about, and I, I'm excited about beginning the series uh, on the kingdom. And so if you're going to inherit the kingdom, You've got to be prepared to rule it. Now, you think about uh, in the natural, uh, Queen Elizabeth in England, uh, her son or her grandson is going to, to rule after her, and it probably won't be long, but they're already preparing. And who, who the next yeah. ruler is going to be in England, that, that, that person's already being prepared. And even, let's say, go all the way down to... Um, to the son and the grandson and even the great grandson, uh, there's already all of those people are being prepared as rulers. Well, do you think God is any less concerned about preparing you uh, to rule in His kingdom? No, He is very, uh, very much concerned about you being prepared to rule the kingdom of God, and so that's what we're going to be uh, talking about. Now, first, uh, the series is called Inheriting the Kingdom. So I want to say, first of all, that there are many people who will not inherit the kingdom. Amen. Many Amen. Christians will not inherit the kingdom. And there are uh, three passages in particular uh, that, that talk about people who will not uh, inherit the kingdom. And and if you know me, I like to talk about positive things, but I believe by the Spirit of God, I'm, I'm to, warn, to warn you that there's a lot of people that will not. And so I want to go over three passages of the people that will not. These are Christians, but they will not inherit the kingdom. And uh, first of all is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, uh, verses 9 through 11, and it lists the immorality, talks about immorality of Christians. And it says these people will not rule. And I'm not going to go over all these. There's just too many things to think about uh, in this. And there's another passage, and it, but I'm going to summarize them. Another passage that's very closely related to that, and this is the works of the flesh. And this is Galatians 5, uh, verses uh, mm. uh, 19 through 21. And again, there are just so many people that will not inherit the kingdom. But the things that the Spirit quickened to me are the four I words, I, uh, immorality, and this is in both of those passages, immorality, impurity, idolatry, and idolatry is mm -hmm. putting anything ahead of God. Amen. Whatever it is, 
whether it's sports or your or your sweetheart or, or whatever or your job uh, your family uh, anything that you put ahead of God that's idolatry and and the fourth I is indecent behavior so if, if there were so many words it, it was hard to even wrap my mind around them and so I believe that's the reason that the Lord wanted me to highlight these passages with these four terms the big eyes immorality impurity idolatry and indecent behavior so all of those things those people are not going to inherit the kingdom yeah that doesn't mean that they're not going to go to heaven right this is not talking about, about salvation this is not about salvation it's not about who's because these are christians if you accept jesus christ as your savior you're going to heaven but you might have sin in your life that hasn't been dealt with. And, and in that case, you can't rule in, in this life like he wants you to. <clears throat> uh, another passage that's closely related to these, uh, it talks about the people in this time that we're living in. And this is 2 Timothy uh, 3. And it talks about in these last days, there will be, an, and, there, and there were four different, phrases that were highlighted to me by the Holy Spirit. And the first was lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure. And they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. So these four things, and let me just go over them again. There, there are lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, and but deny the power of God. And so I I put these in the opposite. What's the opposite of those things? It's the lovers of God and of other people, mm -hmm. the lovers of giving, mm -hmm. the lovers of purpose, Woo! rather than the lovers of pleasure. Amen. And those who embrace, embrace the power of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've, <laughs> we've covered that area. Those are the people that are not going to inherit mm -hmm. the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they don't go to heaven when they, uh, leave this life, but it means they're not going to rule in life because you see, there are two verses I really want to focus on that these are important about reigning in life. And, and the first one is Romans 5 17. It says, We reign in life by Christ Jesus. Amen. So, so we are destined to be kings and to rule a kingdom, to inherit the kingdom, and but we've got to be prepared as kings to rule over it. And the second one is Revelation uh, 5.10. Revelation 5.10 uh, says that uh, we've been made uh, a kings and priests or a kingdom of priests, uh, and we're going to reign mm -hmm. on the earth. Now, and that's not in heaven. Uh, you, you're made kings to rule the kingdom on earth. Mm, hallelujah. And in this life. And so those are our two primary verses about this session tonight, is that we need to be prepared. Uh, we've got a, a kingdom that's the, uh, bigger than uh, the kingdom of England. Uh, uh, it's mm -hmm. more powerful. It's, it's an eternal kingdom. And, yes, yes. And God wants you to be prepared to rule it. And we're going to talk about that. Um, and, and, and there's many things that we want to talk about. But I, I think the next thing that we should talk about is those people uh, who are going to inherit the kingdom. And this is primarily in Matthew. So you could uh, uh, look at these verses if you want to. Um, you know, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus dealt with this in Matthew 5, verse 3. He said, those that are poor in spirit, they're going to inherit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And those that are persecuted for righteousness. Yes, I mean. Right, they are going to inherit the kingdom. Hallelujah. So righteousness is real important. Uh, Jesus said, uh, your righteousness has to be greater than, has to exceed the righteousness of those legalistic people, the scribes and the Pharisees, of legalistic people. You, you have to have more righteousness. So remember Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But righteousness is a part of the kingdom. So he's not right. He's not telling us to seek two different things. He, he's really wanting us to focus on righteousness, the kingdom and us being in right standing. 
because that is a part of the kingdom. So he's not saying seek two things. We need to seek the kingdom to find it. Ooh, not, not, not just to seek it. Well, we spent 10 minutes seeking it, but we didn't find it. No, it's seek it till you find it. And it, you'll never find the end of the kingdom because there are continents uh, of in the supernatural realm that you haven't even explored yet. Whole continents, uh, big areas that that we haven't explored that God wants us uh, to know about. Okay, so there are uh, a few per, a few uh, times that people are talked about as inheriting the kingdom, and and I said first of all those that are poor in spirit, and and those that. Uh, are persecuted for righteousness. Now, the poor in spirit uh, reminds me of Isaiah 66, um, the first verses in Isaiah 66, where God says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. So what are you going to do that's going to impress me? Oh, <laughs> what can we do to impress God? Because heaven is his uh, throne and earth is his footstool and so if we tried to do a little thing here what would we do that would impress him but he tells me in the next uh, part of that passage what what does impress him <clears throat> he has respect of those people who are humble and have a contrite spirit it's just like Amen. there Jesus talked about those that are poor, poor in spirit and those who tremble at the word of God. Ooh, amen. Oh, oh, amen. Do you tremble at the word of God when you hear the word of God? Well, when I uh, heard the truth and the anointed word about the kingdom, I trembled about it. And there was an explosion in me. And, and I want you to realize and see the kingdom that God has, pre has prepared for you. He prepared it before the foundation of the earth. So before he created all of this thing, that you see, he already had a kingdom prepared for you mm -hmm. uh, to rule. And we're going to talk about that. So let, let's think about some other uh, passages that, that talks about. In Matthew 25, I, I really like this, uh, verses 34 through 40. He, Jesus spoke to the, uh, the, to the righteous. And he said, and he put them on his right hand. That's where the righteous go. They go on his right hand. Hallelujah. And he said, uh, inherit the kingdom. Because Woo! when I was hungry, Jesus said, you fed me. Yes, I mean. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And when I was a stranger, you, you took me in. in. And when I was naked, you, you, clothed, you me. clothed me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. And, and, and the righteous on his right hand, they, they said to him, Lord, when did we do yeah, that? When did Lord, we do all those when things? When did we do that? And he said, when you did it to the least of these, you, my brothers and sisters, you did it, did it to unto me. me. Hallelujah. So these are the ones that are going to inherit the kingdom. He said, inherit the kingdom is prepared for you uh, before the foundation. And, and I like what James said in uh, 2 verse 5. Uh, he said, the kingdom is going to uh, be inherited by those that are rich in faith. So it's going to Glory. take some faith to, to receive Ooh. a kingdom, to inherit a kingdom. Hallelujah, to rule. And to rule in that kingdom. You've, you've got to be full of faith. You've got to be rich in faith. Mm. That's, that is exciting. Uh, it's important for you to understand that you are inheriting a kingdom. And, and there are many times there are uh, the people that are not going to inherit the kingdom. I, I, I just counted all of the categories that he said we're not going to inherit and all the categories he said we're going to inherit. Mm -hmm. and, and there there were like four times as many uh, categories of people that were not going to inherit as those that inherit, but they were all Christians, but they're not going to inherit the kingdom because it's about righteousness and it's about uh, uh, following the Lord and, and seeking seeking the kingdom. Uh, these are very important uh, concepts for us to get a hold of. We've got to be prepared. Um, and, and so I want us to think about well, what does the kingdom look like? And, and John 14, 2, Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms mm -hmm. or many places, mm -hmm. uh, or I'd say many realms. And then in Ephesians 2, verse 6, 
He said, we've been seated uh, in heavenly places. Places. You see that word places that has an S in it. So there are different realms. Uh, so in the kingdom, there are many different realms. And we've got to get familiar with these different realms. And if God reveals one of these realms to you, uh, he gives you authority. And he gives you a key to go back into that realm. And let me get Ooh, just give you some mm. examples of some places that the Holy Spirit has taken me in the kingdom. Because mm. I, I know I'm seated in heavenly places, mm. plural. Mm. And some of the places that I uh, frequently visit, uh, include the council room of the Lord because that's where he talks to me and, mm -hmm. and I ask my questions and, uh, and, and seek guidance, but I also uh, communicate with him in the council room mm -hmm. uh, of, of the Lord. Uh, but also I, I'm very familiar with areas of the courts of heaven. There is a, a redemptive court, a court of redemption, and that's where the uh, illegal uh, uh, affairs and issues are dealt with because we've sinned, we've made, uh, uh, we've had problems, we've done things we shouldn't do, and and, and, and we need to bring those uh, and, and deal with uh, legally, and and also uh, our bloodline. Uh, there, there are things in our bloodline that need to be cleansed. Uh, we have, uh, Jesus gave us the right um, to be free from the curse because of what he did on the cross. But the end of the curse doesn't occur until the book of Revelation. So it's going to be a while until the actual, all of the curses are gone. So we have to deal with uh, our bloodlines. And so I've spent a lot of time in the court, uh, in the re court of redemption mm -hmm. uh, of heaven, dealing with the cleansing of my bloodline uh, because I had a lot of things uh, that had to be dealt with. And so to, for me to be prepared to rule the kingdom, I had to have my bloodline cleansed. I had to be clean uh, by the blood of Jesus uh, from the things and the sins that I have committed uh, in my life and the things that I have done that were not uh, uh, appropriately uh, uh, appropriate. <clears throat> so I've spent time there and I'm talking about places in the realm of heaven and in the realm of the supernatural and so if the Holy Spirit takes you into these realms, then you have authority to be there. And uh, that was a, an area where I've spent a lot of time in the court of redemption in heaven. Uh, but I've also spent time in the court of inheritance in heaven uh, because there were parts of my inheritance that I wanted, uh, things that the devil had stolen from me Amen. And, and things that... Uh, I wanted to receive because I knew I have an inheritance. I have an inheritance. Jesus Christ died on the cross to give me an inheritance, and he was resurrected uh, to enforce uh, amen, uh, amen. the will. <clears throat> you know, another verse that, that uh, the people uh, that are going to inherit the, uh, the kingdom are those that do the will of the Father, and that's Matthew 7, uh, verse 21. They do the will of the Father. There's a lot of people say, Lord, Lord, uh, but but they don't inherit the kingdom because they don't do the will of the Father. See, we have to do the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? Well, well, it's to feed the hungry and to and, and to mm -hmm. give water to the thirsty and clothe the, the those, naked, the naked, and all of those things. And and that may not just be in the natural. You know, no. Sherry and I yeah. have done those things for year for years and years in the natural. Well, we've also done the same thing in the, in the spiritual, spiritual realm. And, and so that, that's, that has been uh, what's in, introduced us really to the kingdom is just doing the kingdom. See, the kingdom has to be revealed to you. Then you can walk in it. Yes, and amen. Just amen. reading the parables. Hallelujah. And, and trying to understand the uh, parables with your intellectual mind is not a revelation. <clears throat> and... See, there are revelations and there are mysteries. Revelations, what's revealed to you, revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And that's where you have authority to walk in what has been revealed to you. But God keeps some secrets. And, mm -hmm. and, but he doesn't keep the secrets from you. They're kept for you to seek and to, 
and to find by the Spirit of God. Amen, amen. Uh, see, Proverbs 25, 2, and I'm bringing this to conclusion. Proverbs 25, 2 says it's the glory to God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. Woo, glory. Now, that's Hallelujah. That's we're talking about kings here. Yes. You're kings. Now, you might say, well, and, and let me just say this. Let me go on and side here for just a second. Mm. That in Christ Jesus, there's neither male nor no female. female. So to all you big uh, uh, husky guys, and uh, you are the bride of Christ because yes. You, yes. your spirit, because you are a spirit being, yes. and your father is a spirit, and he's the father of spirits. Yes. He's not the father of natural minds and natural bodies. He's the father, father of, of spirits. spirits. And so you lovely ladies, you are, each of you, is a son of God. Yes. Uh, because there's neither male nor female, and so your spirit uh, not only is it the bride of Christ, but it is the son of God and, and that a son, son, a son. son, and it needs to be groomed and matured to be king Woo! because the king searches out the mysteries and the Hallelujah. kingdom is a mystery and it has, it has to be revealed to us by the spirit and what is revealed to us. Uh, we can walk in it and we can walk in that realm of the kingdom and he gives us the key. And so if we go into that realm of the kingdom, and as I said, there are many different realms of the kingdom and we'll never search them all out. They're unsearchable. But what, what has been revealed to you, you have authority to walk in it. And so if you've been in a particular realm, and I've mentioned many in which I have. Yeah, and uh, I have one. Have, I have entered. Yes, Sherry. I've been spent lots of time in the war room okay you know praying and and stopping the enemy and revealing uh what the enemy's plan is and then a strategy in in how to uh push the enemy back so the war room is very familiar to me well in another realm where i've spent a lot of time to the throne room Yes. Because I have access there by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so I've spent a lot of time. That's where I go to get grace and mercy and help in time of trouble. And I, oh, boy, I've had trouble. I've had trouble. <laughs> I've had a lot of trouble. And so I've had to go to the throne room a lot. So I've spent a lot of time in a lot of different realms of the kingdom. And so it's, it's important to spend enough time in these realms to know where you have authority, where you have a key. Mm -hmm. So you can go into these realms where you where he has taken you, where the spirit has taken you before, you can return to at any time. You have the authority the to operate to in the there and, and the key to the kingdom and to the king into that realm. And so you can go there and receive what you need that is in that realm. And, and so I, I want you to know that, yes, you are king. You're being prepared to rule as a king in the kingdom of God. And, and that is a very important position. And, and there, there are several other things I want to talk about, but I'm bringing it to a close now uh, because of our limited time. But I want to say that there are a lot of other areas that we need to talk about. We need to talk about the kingmaker, but that's- Yes! We need to talk about the kingmaker because there is a kingmaker that will make you uh, the king uh, to rule. And, and, and you do not rule. What, what does a king look like? Well, uh, let me just tell you a few things uh, just briefly. And, and, and I like to think about David because he, he had some things that were very interesting about the way he ruled. And, and he went into a cave uh, one time and, and some men uh, came to him who were outcasts and debtors and he trained them and turned them into mighty men. Amen. That's a, Amen. That is how a king operates in this kingdom. They empower other people. Amen. And, and, Amen. and it was uh, uh, confirmed with uh, Luke twenty two thirty two. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Jesus talked to Simon and said, uh, Simon, Simon, uh, the Satan has desired to sift, sift you, you like, like wheat, wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you return... When you return to me, you strengthen your brothers. You, yes, you 
uh, empower your brothers. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. don't get the wrong idea about what a ruler is in the kingdom of God, because uh, uh, 1 Peter 5 uh, talks about uh, we have been uh, assigned, uh, different mm -hmm. people are assigned to different people, but we don't lord over their faith. We don't lord it over their faith. No, uh, we're here to strengthen and encourage people and, and, and to uh, encourage them to fulfill purpose. Mm -hmm. Don't be a lover of self, a lover of money, a lover of pleasure, but love God, love, love people love giving and love purpose and embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.